Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about the phylum Nematoda, and we'll be following this outline. Introduction to the phylum Nematoda, we'll talk about the, their characteristics. Then we'll now classify the phylum Nematoda. We'll talk about the old classification as well as the modern classification. And last, but we'll discuss a representative of the phylum Nematoda. We'll discuss Ascaris lubricoide. Now let's start with the phylum nematoda. Organisms under the phylum nematoda are generally regarded as the nematodes and they are commonly called the roundworms. This phylum contains more than 27,000 living species and they inhabit a variety of habitats such as the soil, freshwater, the sea. Some are actually parasites living inside or on the body of living organisms, causing a variety of diseases such as ascariasis caused by ascaris lubricoides. We also have the Trashiasis, which causes the eyelashes to grow towards the eyes or inward towards the eyes. We also have the enterobiosis, which causes the itchy of the inner region, as you can see from the diagram. Enterobiosis is also regarded as the pinworm infection. And a host of other infections, such as the filaria infection or filariasis and hookworm infection. Now, take this as assignment. Highlight a list of filaria infection and their causative agent as well as hookworm infection and their causative agent. You know that some filaria infections are actually regarded as the tropical or neglected tropical diseases. So highlight them. Let's talk about the characteristics of nematodes. As you can see from the diagram, they possess flexible body and they are cylindrical in shape. Now take a look at these worms. Majority of them are actually less than 5 cm long. However, some of them are microscopic, while others can be as long as 1 uh, meter, especially the parasitic nematode. Nematodes are actually triploblastic. Now, take a look at this diagram. You realize that you have the ectoderm, the emexoderm, and the endoderm. They are also bilaterally symmetrical, which means that they can be cut into two equal halves through one plane. Note that these organisms are pseudocolumates. You can see the pseudocolumates in the diagram. They exhibit organ level of organization. Now, let's talk about their elementary canal. Their elementary canal actually comprises of the mouth, the pharynx, the intestine, and the anus, as you can see from the diagram. Now, note that they have two openings to the external environment, which is the mouth and the anus. This makes them have a complete digestive system. Or elementary canal. Remember, those organisms that possess one opening to the external environment possess incomplete, while those that have two openings to the external environment possess complete digestive system. Now, note that the outer body or the integument covering is relatively thick. In nematode, being made of non cellular cortical produced by the underlying epidermis. Note that the epidermis in nematode is syncytial. Syncytial epidermis comprises of cells with large number of nuclei. Nematodes exhibit sexual dimorphism. Now take a look at this diagram. Did you notice that the female are actually bigger than the male? Other characteristics include the fact that their body wall muscles are longitudinal and fertilization is actually internal. Nematodes carry out sexual mode of reproduction and they produce amoeboid sperm cells. Note that nematode possess sensory organs called phasmid and amphids. Note that the amphid is situated at the anterior region while the phasmid is situated at the posterior region. Let's talk about the classification of nematodes. Sheetwood classified nematode into two classes which are phasmidae and aphasmidae. Note that the phasmidae is also regarded as sesenetia why the aphasmidae is also regarded as adenophora. Let's talk about the phasmidae. As you can see from the diagram, they possess the phasmid in their posterior side. Most of the phasmidae are actually parasitic, though they possess free living species. They lack coda adhesive glands. Now, take a look at this diagram. You can see the coda adhesive gland. In this set of nematodes, in phasmidae, they actually lack this organ. Example of the phasmida include the enterobius, the ascaris, ucheseria, and various parasitic as well as free living nematodes. Let's talk about the class aphasmida. The aphasmida actually lack phasmid but possess amphid. 
which are also sensory organs. Majority are free living and they possess the coda adhesive glands. Examples include the mammies and the paramammies. Recent classification divide the phylum Nematoda into numerous classes, one of which include the Rhabditidia. The Rhabditidia comprise of both free living and parasitic species. However, majority of this class is actually parasitic and they include the Ascaris, Enterobium, Necrotoa species, the Wuchesheria species, and numerous others, while examples of the free living species include the Senoradity species. This class possesses amphid. Inopli, another class of the phylum Nematoda, also possess amphid but lack plasmid. They comprise of both parasitic as well as free living species. We also have the class Chromodora, which comprise of both free living as well as parasitic species. Note that the Chromodora also possess amphid. Let's discuss a representative of the phylum Nematoda. Let's talk about Ascaris lubricoide. As you can see from the diagram, Ascaris are large parasitic worms. They are actually the most common parasitic worm in human beings, infecting millions of people worldwide. Humans get infected by drinking contaminated water or food contaminated with the egg of this parasite. The domain of this parasite is Eukaryota or Eukarya, belong to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum, Nematoda, class Chromodaria, order Ascarididae, family Ascarididae, genus Ascaris, and species Lubricoidae. In terms of nutrition, they derive their nutrients from their host. As you are aware, this parasite pass through numerous organs in the body of humans, including the gut, the trachea, and others, deriving their food from the host. Excretion and gaseous exchange occur through the process of diffusion in Ascaris lubricoide. Some of the features of Ascaris lubricoide is actually be displayed. You can see that they possess um, two openings to the external environment, the mouth and the anus. You can see that the female is actually bigger than the male. You can see the lateral line and other features being displayed. How do these organisms carry out reproduction? Ascaris only carry out sexual mode of reproduction and sexes are separate. They exhibit sexual dimorphism. As you can see from the diagram, the male reproductive organ of Ascaris include the testes, the vast difference, or the sperm dot, copulatory spocus, and others. Why the female reproductive organ includes the ovaries, as you can see from the diagram, the uterus, the ovidot, and others. Copulation in Ascaris occur in the gut of humans, and they may produce the amoeboid sperm, which swim to fertilize the ovum in the uterus. Details of the life cycle will be discussed in our parasitology series. What is the economic importance of nematodes? Nematodes cause a variety of diseases in humans as well as in other animals. Note that the soil inhabiting nematodes actually feed on bacteria in the soil as well as fungi. They can also attack insects, serving to control pests. They also play a critical role in nutrient cycling in nature. This is the end of this lecture. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.